Right, so, how do you use procedural generation to change the song structure? Well, clearly it's not possible to add or remove patterns just by using the native devices. That's something exclusive to Lua and the scripting terminal and editor where you're creating tools. So just using native devices, we're going to have to get kind of creative and just do it in a limited fashion for this proof of concept here. You are capable of doing a lot more using uh, what I'm going to show here, but it's just going to be a simple version of that to run through here. So, what the original Maybe Melody song does is it gradually introduces tracks uh, one at a time, sometimes in conjunction, and it does it mostly gradually, but sometimes they come in abruptly. I'm going to do a simpler version of that, just targeting the group tracks. There's the kicks, the perk, uh, the pad. They have all the tracks contained within them. So I'll target each of those for fading in, since I'm just going to be doing a fade in version here. And also the Glock, which is not within a group track. So that's four different ones that are going to fade in one pattern at a time. Obviously, when you're doing song structures, you want the start and then something to do with the end. Uh, you could do an inverted version of what I'm going to show here to fade things out at the end. But most of the action within a song, since you've probably created songs yourself, you're targeting things more than just the volume and doing complicated things with that to create interest within the song. Not going to be doing that here, obviously, but it is an option to expand on this technique that I've shown here. So, relatively simply, what is the technique? Well, you're just using three devices. There's the LFO at the end here, and what this does is targeting the mixer volume. It's going to raise it up from uh, minus infinity, silence, up to zero. And I'll do that gradually over the course of the pattern. Uh, initially it says one LPC here, and we'll discuss why in a minute, but normally it's 128 LPC. That's because within the song, the patterns are each 128 lines long. So this is going to match for that. Now, as I discussed, we're doing this for four different tracks. So why is there only one LFO? Well, this is the sneaky part of it. The destination is available for targeting by other meta devices, just like any other parameter. So if I wanted to on the fly over the course of a song, select different tracks to fade in, then you could change the destination track. And that's what happens. I have the Hydra restricting things. Uh, there's 17 tracks here actually, but as you can see, I've got this to 18. And again, we'll come to this in a minute as to why that's higher. And connected to the Hydra is the formula device, which is set up to target the four tracks in a very particular way. Uh, right at the start of the song, we have a table. And I've worked out the values here necessary to target these four tracks according to the Hydra values. I just worked out what they are manually and then put them in here and that works absolutely fine. Got the random seed of course, which will ensure that with the same seed number connected to this, it is going to play the same way each time but use a different sequence depending on what the different seed is. And as I discovered at the end of the last video, the random number generator does not contain itself within each formula device, it actually works application wide. And the same is true for the random seed generator. So within the pad device, I have the two old formula devices. I've just removed the random seed generators from them because it only needs to be done once. And since we have this one in the master track, and this is just happening right at the start, then we can do this here in the one place. Now, what we need to happen is for the table that we set up here to randomize its elements according to what the random seed is. And so we have this little for loop, which will ensure that that actually happens. Then 
when the song itself is playing and we're going through the actual patterns. We have the sequence position above one, that's the main body of the song, the sequence position number X plus one. So it's automatically uh, discovering how many entries are within this table that you've set up and that's going to vary depending on the number of tracks within the particular song. And you do need to manually set this up, but everything else is taken care of here. And then it will return the X sequence position, which is passed on to the Hydra device, which then passes it on to the LFO. And so you're now targeting uh, within the same seed, the same sequence of tracks. And it all works together quite nicely. Now, otherwise, when the sequence of fading in the tracks has finished, you want to return a value of 1. And as I alluded to earlier, that is that max value of 18, and it goes beyond this. Now, this is so that what I've got set up is a, I made a change. So the master track is also an alias, just like all of the other patterns and I've manually inserted the reset so that the LFO is reset each pattern. Now, what will happen is when it gets past the fading in, it's still going to reset there, but because destination is beyond this, and it will show NA, and then none, and none for the device and the parameter, then it's not going to target anything. And there's a happy accident about what happens here. You might expect when this is set to none and these are set to none that when you set this back to a valid track that this is going to be automatically set to zero and it will just keep targeting none. Thankfully it doesn't. When you start targeting a valid track again it keeps mixer and volume targeted. So that's great because otherwise none of this connected series or devices would work at all. And it all works great. But there is a little bit of setup required right at the start and that is all of the targeted tracks for fading in, they need to start at zero. And the reason for this is because when you start uh, a new song, when you load it in, any LFOs, even if they're one shot, they will go through their envelope that one time uh, reaching the end. And that's also why there's a second change here, which is happening here in the graphical automation. This is set to one so that it quickly goes through when the song is played right to the end of that pattern with an LFO and ready for the reset. And then it goes to the intended value, which is 128. And that's why it's here within the graphical automation. You cannot get that level of precision using effect commands. Now, it would be possible to automate all of that, so you don't need to set this up. But, uh, like I said, I'm keeping things simple for this example. The formula device is really powerful. You can set it up so that it does specific things uh, right at the start of a song, such as accepting data that you've typed into the code box, or perhaps accepting it from external sources feeding into the formula but you can actually do a lot with this and then have it do something else when the main body of the song is running. But that's for another time and something more complicated. And so this very particular sequence of just three devices actually allows procedural generation running on only the native effects to control a song's structure. And the only thing left is to change the seed number here to something different and away we go.